300, boy. I guess they mean like 300 male strippers. <laughs> you know? Greased up Greeks. I mean, yeah, seriously, to be a Spartan, all you need is a six pack on your stomach and a lot of baby oil. This I know, for all you have to, all they talk about being perfect to be a Spartan, all you need is a six pack. I mean, here you got a movie. It's so much like some movies are so bad that they're good. This movie is so macho that it's gay. <laughs> yeah, it makes Spartacus look like the most heterosexual film ever made. I mean, and, and the thing is, I like the movie. It, it it just reminded me of the most beautiful gay pride parade I've ever seen. <laughs> Seriously, I don't. I know we make gay comments all the time about movies, but. I dare anyone to look at this without gay goggles, okay? <laughs> I mean, uh, seriously, Andy Dick's going, well, it's too gay for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's let's put the gay stuff aside for a moment. Let's talk about the fact that the director came <clears throat> to the studio with this movie and said, I've made my movie about 300 Spartans. Well, it's only 20 minutes long. What do we do? Well, we could show it all in slow motion. <laughs> I mean, come on. You look at that trailer. All that slow motion isn't for the trailer. That's the movie. It's like, <laughs> here's some horses riding over the hill, Davey. I know Leon had me laughing. He was just like, yeah, you know, it's not fair because the Spartans had an advantage. They get to, like, make things go in bullet time. It's not fair that you you stole my joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, you know I was going to say that. Okay, well, it's like, like we can't let you say it. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> well, look, we yeah, which rewind. one's going to end up in the final edit? <laughs> yeah, for real. We're going to rewind. Go ahead. There you go. Okay. Well, the Spartans are known to be such badass fighters, but they had the advantage because they all fight in bullet time. <laughs> But, you know, the funny thing that cracked me up the most about this is essentially this movie is the final fight scenes from Return of the King if they were directed by Sam Peckinpah and Baz Luhrmann together. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're just so over the top bloody and yet just couldn't be any more, well, gay. Really. I, was, I was waiting for the Spartans to get in. Let me start over. I was waiting for the Spartans when they got up on their line to start singing Oklahoma. <laughs> I mean, J Hugh Jackman was destined to come in at any moment. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, the thing is, this is an actual historical epic that is made to look like a comic book. It's, 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 a, it's a video game. It's a comic book. And that's was... not necessarily, hold on, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, what you have here is like uh, they've taken an actual event and put cartoon characters in it. You got one guy who would with saws for arms you got giants you got people who are like 50 feet tall it's crazy but that's because this is an actual historical event that was adapted by frank miller the guy who wrote sin city as a comic book and they adapted the movie from the comic book yeah no exactly this is based on a comic which is why you can't go in and say this is stupid because i mean if you know the source material it, you should already know that this is over exaggerated. Well, yeah, it's a history lesson for people who hate history or are too dumb to read. It's like like when you have one of those those black inner city classes that like, oh man, history is bull. No, no, kids, watch this movie. Oh man, history's badass. Yeah, except that this is the history movie for the gay kids. It's like, <laughs> see, history can be exciting and gay. Well, this movie's going to go over big in prisons is all I'm saying. <laughs> That's true. Oh, I was telling uh, Leon last night, I was like, man, this is going to be on a steady loop at the gay clubs. I mean, it, 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 it's going to be just playing in the background because it's really, I mean, damn, I, it's it's a bunch of men standing around. I, no, first of all, I don't even know how people fought wars like this. They fought they fought battles half naked. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, okay, they decided to protect their shins and that was about it. <laughs> yeah. It was almost it's it was like when we were kids and we put on those those bath towels around our necks and ran around the neighborhood trying to be like Superman. That's what these people did. They just put a cape on and like, okay, I'm ready to go. Are you kidding me? Look at those bodies. Those bodies are so tight they can deflect bullets. <laughs> those that look at those six pack abs, man. Look at those tits. I mean man breasts. Those things are larger than my wife's <laughs> and all that salad dressing they rub all over themselves that's that's got to deflect blows as well not to mention it it looked kind of cold i don't know if it was just <laughs> just me but they were stabbing people with their nipples you know I mean, my like, nipples can cut through your armor <laughs> Wow, you know, for us to be so heterosexual, we should have noticed a lot of gay stuff in there. <laughs> well, it was you like, can't help but notice it. <laughs> it's like it's like somehow this is like a, a a gay thing that just happens to be a movie somewhere hidden beneath it all. Now, just real quick, I did like the movie a lot, and I didn't even mind the slow motion. I thought that 
it's being that it's based on a comic book i thought that it you know it tried to capture the frames of a comic so that's why they put it in there so i really did like the movie did it what what'd you guys think about the movie I, I i liked it too i just thought like i said it's just so exaggerated that you can't help but laugh at it i okay. mean it's like they're so deadly serious all the time they're just oh no this is serious this is god's blood and honor and loyalty and men nipples and it's all very very serious and how dare you laugh at it but you can't help it i mean yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, I liked it more than Gladiator, but less than Braveheart. I uh, didn't like it all that much. I thought it was one of the most beautiful films I'd ever seen, but it was one of the most boring, beautiful films I'd ever seen. Okay, no, that's fair. That's that's a great wrap-up. I did there. like the Lord of the Rings references, because, you know, they have a cave troll. They have a cave troll! <laughs> <laughs> Man, ever since Harry Potter, that, that troll has been working. I'm telling you! Hey, good press agent. He, gets, he gets more work than Andy Dick. <laughs> wait a minute, oh, wait a minute, y'all talking about that deformed guy? <laughs> yeah, no, no, not the little guy, the moto. big Dude, the first big like yeah, boss the big, that yeah, they big fight. troll they, they bring out who's on the chain. Remember he's on the chain? That's yeah, the he's chain. the troll. He's the boss from level one. Of yeah, 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 the level Dude. one boss. I know, yeah. yeah, no, you're right. Dude, that's the exact same scene in, in uh what is it? The two is it Fellowship of the Ring. Fellowship of the Ring, yeah. When they're in the mines of Moria and they they bring in the cave troll on chains and he shakes off the chains and the guy's like, They have a cave troll. But that's and, what and then he showed up in Harry Potter and now he's here. <laughs> oh oh wait, wasn't he the love interest in the last Drew Barrymore movie? <laughs> <laughs> that uh but this movie is like a vi very much like a video oh, game. Yeah. They they okay, if you're familiar with video games, you fight a bunch of guys and you come up against a big monster that's called a boss. That's what they did in this movie. <laughs> yeah. They they fought a bunch of guys and they bring out a monster. Not to mention cut scenes. I mean, it's just like it cuz they'll do that and then there's a cut scene and then there's more fighting and then there's a boss and then there's a cut scene. The yeah. only the only problem with this movie is I felt like I had no control over my character. I mean, the controller just wasn't doing what I wanted. Really? You just don't, you know, it's hard when the graphics are that good to get the full 360 look around control that you're yeah, looking for. Yeah. Now, now to me this also just seemed like a big like army propaganda a movie like all those Marines commercials. You know, it starts off like the knights in shining armor, but then it warps into a Marine. And I can just see this doing that. You know, the few, the proud, the now, Spartans. Now you know what? Hold on, don't, don't step on the line. Say the line again. The few, the proud, the Spartans. You know, this is what's, you know what's angering me is people uh, in the press have tried to drum things up and have been asking Zack Snyder, the director. So, do you think? George Bush is more like Xerxes or he's more like Leonidas. And I'm sitting here going, guys, come on. This has nothing to do with George Bush. First of all, both of these guys fought in wars. <laughs> both of these guys served in their military. You know, George Bush is neither of these guys. Yeah. Xerxes is one of the funniest villains ever because basically oh. he's the villain from Stargate. You know? No, he's not. <laughs> with more ba piercings. Basically, he's a model sitting on a very large throne going, my thralls, go and fight the Spartans. <laughs> You're supposed to be scary and you got glitter makeup on? Well, what's funny is, like, even in a, in a gay movie like this, he's very effeminate. He stands out as effeminate, but, but then he talks <laughs> like this. <laughs> that's, that's true. He's I'll like, get he's like. You, Leonidas. He's butch and femme at the same time. He's like the ultimate gay man. We have combined the genetic, <laughs> we combined the genetic material of the butchest man ever and the femmest man ever to create uber gay, and we'll call him Xerxes. Well, it was funny because, uh, like, the main villain in this movie is like. Uh, a nine foot tall goth kid. <laughs> I mean, yeah. All the piercings on his face and the makeup. I mean, he looked like he just. And they bring him out on this uh, this this big uh, uh, float, you know. And, and it's like they just brought him in from a Nine Inch Nails concert or something. <laughs> We've genetically blended Dennis Haysbert and Doctor Frankenfurter to create the ultimate villain. <laughs> with no, a little Dennis is, Rodman thrown in. I was about to say, no, they, they combine it with Dennis Rodman. <laughs> what what is up with these emo kid villains all of a sudden? It's you know guys who hate their dads who have to you know take it out on the rest of the world. That's funny. Like our president? <laughs> you know what? That is funny, though. That villain is is, is Dennis Rodman. Yeah, that's what, that's what I thought when he first came out. I was like, oh, my God, it's Dennis Rodman. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. It's Demolition Man. <laughs> All right. I think.